This will be a video detailing what occurred in Huey and what I've managed to glean from it. Isaiah 16.3 Quote And though a tenth remains in the land, it will again be laid waste. But as the terebinth and oak leave stumps when they are cut down, so the holy seed, or the zadik, the righteous ones, will be the stump in the land. This is the tikkun, the cyclical rotational farming of the human cattle, and the engineers of civilization and empires, both artificial constructs produced vis-a-vis -vis the fiat of credit, maintain control of these cycles until the end of days, or the end of these epochal tikkun cycles, and at that point, the final world dominion shall have been reached. This shall be the conclusion of the totalizing destruction of all other cultures, creeds, and races upon the face of the planet. Even the heart of darkness within the natural environment shall be subject to this punitive cleansing, or so is the intended plan. In my video titled The Grand Sothic Cycle, I show plainly the black star they worship, Sirius, and that we are in the final jubilee era or seven Shemitahs, or one Sirius or Sothic cycle of the Western Empire. As you state, oh and by the way, most empires or civilizations last for about 250 years, which is approximately, which is approximately given that, and again the Sothic cycle is about 50 years as well, then they last for about five uh, Jubilee eras. See the Bhavar Chakra, of the Vedic tradition. The thing which holds the wheel within its devilish claws is Yama, or Yahweh, which is very similar in a, t in a transliterative sense, and as we're going to see in a myth mythological sense too, eh, to Yahweh. So you have Maui, you have also Yahweh, right? And both were gods of fire within eh, their respective traditions. Moreover, the ancient Sator magic square, found even in Pompeii, which strangely enough was also destroyed by fire, thus showcasing a strong mimetic history, and thus a potential age-old cult to it, can be firmly translated, I have translated it through both etymology and referential information, to Sator Arepo Tenet Opera Rotas, or he, the cedar or farmer Sator, who is without knowledge of good or evil, that's the Arepo, or in Sanskrit it's Arepas, which literally means nihilist or without, without a knowledge of good or evil, in its literal sense, turns the wheel with manipulation, unquote. So literally, he who is without knowledge of good or evil, he who is the author of both good or evil, as we see within Isaiah, referencing Yahweh, Indeed, this links to the etymology of the Georgia Guidestones, or with Georgia deriving from the Greek word meaning agricultural things, or farm work in its archaic sense, it can also mean harvest as well. Then Georgia Guidestones has the hidden meaning of Guidestones to human farming, or Guidestones to the harvest. This is the same idea behind that Jesse Ventura episode from, I believe, 09. I, I think that the show was called Conspiracy Theory or something along those lines. You had the woman fly in from somewhere in South America. She was uh, a White House physician and she recounts a story where an acting government official at the time stated that, she, that uh, it wouldn't be long before the great cull it's the same idea. It's the rotational farming. It's the cyclical pattern of raising up a civilization by fiat, which derives from the Latin let it be, which is a Kabbalistic term, by the way, by fiat credit and then collapsing it, right? And the reason these empires come into being, which they are artificial constructs, I mean, the, the most poignant example of that is Alexander the Great. I mean, how do you conquer 
the entirety of Asia with an army of 50,000 of your native troops. And, and what you have to recall, he was conquering these areas in rapid succession. So he, firstly, you have to garrison these, these areas with your own native uh, Macedonian troops in this sense, your loyal retinue. Or you have to bribe the native administration to then run the city for you and, and run it well, right? You have to provide them their 30 pieces of silver. Where did Macedon get that type of coinage to fund a continual conquest without the need for empire building, right? What would be called empire building or building the administrative, the infrastructural and legitimacy of power, right? I mean, that can only be done through coinage and through a vast network of advisors and uh, bought-off bureaucrats. The only way to do that is through fiat. Of course, just like the Neo-Babylonian Empire, which about, again, 250, 300 years prior, was overthrown by Cyrus the Great. And the gates were opened in certain cities, uh, most notably Babylon as well, by this clique, right? And Cyrus was funded by them. And that's how the Achaemenid Empire came to be. We see the same thing, by the way, of the fall of Visigothic Spain and the quick conquest of what eventually would be known as uh, Al-Andalus and, and which was conquered by the, the Umayyad Caliphate, which became, in time, uh, the Caliphate of Cordoba. That's what it was referred to. Digressing. Moreover, see the end of Revelation and the incessant connection between humanity and either grapes, which have a very interest and occult meaning, which I will deal with in another video of mine. Actually, it's the Black Star analysis video. Or crops ripe for harvest, right? In essence, Yahweh is the god of death, similar to the judgment of Anubis or the wild hunt. And these are all synonymous with the alchemical negredo, or point of the great cull, at the end of the epochal cycle. They worship death, a deity or force of death, and they are wielders of chaos to perpetuate a cold and calculating false order within this abode of the dead that we dwell in. Yahweh does not equal the true God. He is akin to the Gnostic notion of the Demiurge, and is but the warden of the material veil, nothing more. Indeed, these gods are not entities, but forces of both visible and immaterial nature, to which groups embody these forces and manifest the whims of this embodied force like a puppet to it, an egregore, or a collectivized thought form that is produced from the spiritual, that higher vital essence, we can refer to as the initial thought prior to its modulation through the organ of the mind and intellectual dogmatic sense of a people. That is, mind and the ocular apparatus are a system for the projection of information rather than merely an inflow of it. This, however, maintains a consistent feedback loop of information and the mental modulation of it, which produces our creation of and experiencing of material existence. Hence, reality is not necessarily real, but is a product of the image produced by the shared imaginative quality of the mind, of which is fueled by the fractal essence of the source in the perceivable essence of the thought. That is, common to us all, and hence our experience of existence is likewise common. Accordingly, the experience is modulated by the mind and thus the thought, or consciousness, is warped around it. Indeed, the shape of the earth matters little because our consciousness, or the initial thought, pure potential discharged through the prism of the mind, provides the perturbation within the void or the aether, the field. That is the motion that maintains the wheel. That is the seed of Lush, if you will, 
We generate the reality we experience. We are the authors of our own simulation, one that is a simulacrum of reality, but is an involuted or lesser form of it. Such is the case with the involution of the spirit within the various temporal aspects it does house, which can be broadly categorised as the mental and bodily aspects. At each stage, like a filter, the initial thought or fractal essence becomes altered by these aspects and its pure potential undifferentiated is thus separated or differentiated, like the white light striking the prism and refracting into the wild spectrum of separated colour. I just wish to state that to provide a general understanding of what I was meaning by that a previous paragraph. This is why they have maintained such a rigid and strict adherence to the faith via the instilling in their ranks of a them and us mentality, through the primary motivator of a victim mentality or the fear of victimization, unless they collectivize and isolate psychologically and otherwise as a group. And this said adherence has been, has even been instituted at the point of a sword or by the threat, implied or outrightly stated, of the obliteration of the potential apostates and their loved ones. When people become but props to manipulate and abuse, to then keep the wheel of Yama or Yahweh spinning, then setting up the conditions for the potential obliteration of all of their European ilk becomes less of an obstacle. Of course, in that sense as well, further obliterating via burnt offering a couple of hundred people on May is also not out with their unethical boundaries. This is entirely a theurgical plan, it is all a ritual, a way to manifest the momentum required for the demiurgic satyr, Yahweh or Yama, to maintain and strengthen this system of human entrapment. We have not seen anything yet. The first four Shemitahs or seals will be opened by 2029. September 2023 is the end of the Shemitah, and usually a burnt offering was made to Yahweh on this religiously significant occasion. Of course, as we see uh, within Maui, uh, nothing has changed in that regard. Moreover, why was Maui chosen? Other than the pragmatic reasons, we see that in Tahitian mythology, Maui was a wise man or prophet who is considered to have discovered and shared the secrets of fire, again like Prometheus or Lucifer or Enki. Hence, he is also shown as the god of fire, unquote. Again, just like Yahweh, Yahweh is also shown as a god of fire, which we shall get to. Again, Maui, Yahweh, Maui, Yahweh, very similar in a transliterative sense. There is much social priming that suggested this event was coming to pass. The Simpsons also suggested this plan for me in the 2016 episode, Monty Burns Flying Circus, which showed beams coming down from the sky and setting buildings alight. Let us look into The Simpsons and its etymology. Recall, Simpson etymologically derives from the medieval pet name of the Hebrew Shimeon, or Simon, meaning obedience, and thus Simpson means son of obedience, hence obedience to the agenda. However, it may also derive from the Hebrew Shema, to hear or listen, hence the son who listens, thus reporting on the plan, in the case of the Simpsons. Moreover, Sim or Sime, the Hebrew, or pardon me, the medieval pet name, as I have mentioned, is also linked to the word of simulation, or a sim. This itself derives from the Proto-Italic simalis, or from the Proto-Indo-European sem, together, one, which is also the beginning of Semitic. The one is another name for Sirius, or the monadic source, the black star as mentioned by Bowie, and the reason for the black cubes, though it also ties into other Saturnian or psychopomp esoteric concepts as well. Finally, in the Semitic etymological sense, we can trace back Shama or Shimeon, 
which also sounds very similar to Shem, or the name, to the proto-Semitic Shama, then to both the ancient Egyptian Kemetic eh, Sedom, or Shedom, which means to hear, and the ancient Egyptian Semit, again, a bit like Semitic, right? And to the Proto-Indo-European Swinne, or to sound. Interestingly, the Kemetic Sedum, to hear, may have been pronounced. Though we can only infer the vowels, right? Remember that. As Sodom, or Shodom, or Shodom. This links to the Sodom of the biblical story. That place that was ravaged by the fire of Yahweh, where people were also turned to pillars of salt. Now indeed, a lot of this is metaphorical. The pillars of salt, most certainly. But the fire destroying the various cities mentioned, of which Sodom is but one, is interesting nonetheless. Sodom derives from the Hebrew Shadom, which itself it has no real Hebraic etymology. Thus, it probably derives from the aforesaid Kemetic etymology as but another loanword taken by the Hebrews or Hyksos from the ancient Egyptians, along with Gomorrah and several others, depending on sources. Sodom was destroyed entirely, and we can imagine the Dead Sea and its toxic, anomalous, high bromide content came to be in those days. Have they attempted this all before? That's the question we have to ask ourselves. DEW weapon patent. Quote, apparatus for a DEW, which was filed by BAE Systems PLC on June the 13th, 2019. Its description states, quote, the controller controls the DEW to direct energy towards the target environment conditionally upon the data, or on the above described parameters, which depend on the data. This may include not engaging the target, or engaging the target, or engaging the target at a lower power, thereby lowering or reducing collateral damage, as described below, unquote. A weapon system to selectively destroy targets at certain areas, which is conveniently what we have seen in all of these wildfire events that are blamed upon uh, climactic changes, typically. Quote, DE weapon and passive millimetre wave imager for target tracking, unquote, filed January 27th, 2020, is another patent example of DEW technology. Another patent is simply titled DEW, patent number W O two O one six O two four two six five A one filed july second, twenty fifteen by Raphael Advanced Defence Systems Limited. Its description states quote, The present invention relates to DEW and in particular it concerns DEWs based on fibre lasers for use against a target. The weapon comprising a plurality of laser units, unquote. Mark Esper stated at the Air Force Association's Virtual Airspace and Cyber Conference on September 16th, 2020, quote, In space, Moscow and Beijing have turned a once peaceful area into a warfighting domain. They have weaponized space through killer satellites, DEWs, and more in an effort to exploit our systems and chip away at our military advantage. China and Russia seek to erode our long-standing dominance in air power by long-range fires." Unquote. This is to ensure that the population does not expect that their own government are utilising these technologies upon their populace as a demographic and societal engineering tool. Already in the 1970s, former National Security Advisor Zbigniew Brzezinski had foreseen in his book Between Two Ages that, quote, technology will make available to the leaders of major nations techniques for conducting secret warfare, of which only a bare minimum of the security forces 
need to be appraised. Techniques of weather modification could be employed to produce prolonged periods of drought or storm." Unquote. He also states somewhere else in that book by 2018 that these governments will have the technology available to them to conduct secret weather wars against their own populace. Very interesting. Josh Green, governor of Hawaii, was quoted in, a, in an August 27th, 2023 article on the Prepare for Change website. He stated, quote, There are going to be fires, month in and month out, all across the country, unquote. Wow. In the mysterious book Fire and Fury, the story of the 2023 Maui fire and its implications for a climactic changes, unquote, was published on August 10th, with the fires beginning on August 8th, or 8-8-2023, 88-322, if you will. A very quickly written and published book, or one that was written right before this event, we see that the clear alias of Dr. Miles Stone's Again, milestone, or from the Latin, milia passum, or stones that were erected at periodic intervals of a journey or road of it, outlines the events that would occur in Maui and the media aftermath, blaming it on climactic changes. It is a 44-page book, to which 44 is the number of Hanukkah candles within the pre-prepared Hanukkah candle boxes, and the number of candles lit throughout the festivities. Hanukkah outlines the Maccabean revolt and the bloody events that saw zealots cut down the Hellenic or Hellenized people in Judea in droves. In some accounts, mass cannibalism was also carried out by the zealots. Interestingly, 44 days from the book's publishing on the 10th of August puts us at the 23rd of September 2023. What is significant about this date? It is the final day of the Shemitah year, or period of 2022 to 2023, which is, which ends on Tishrei uh, 10th, September 24th or 25th. Moreover, from the book's publication of the 10th of August 2023 to the beginning of Hanukkah on the 7th of December 2023, is precisely 119 days, or 911 backwards. That is also exactly 3 months and 27 days, to which the connector of those numbers is the 9, or the Kabbalistic number of man. This connects to the generally attested to 666 or 999 logos we see a replete in the corporate world and infamously upon the WEF's logo and the CERN logo. Interestingly, we see that the Mountain Dew, again, Dew, D-E-W, released a summer flavour just prior to the event titled My Burst. Of course, the wording of the new flavour is rather troubling, but we see Mountain Dew, D-E-W, to which the latter word is an acronym for the weapon system at the fore, of the potential cause of this event. Moreover, the mountain imagery is also something that is connected to Yahweh, as he also assumed the Amaru epithet of El Shaddai, which derives from the Amaru or Amarutu epithet of Bel Shaddai, of which the former translates as God of the Mountain, with Shaddai deriving from the Akkadian word Shadu, or literally equating to of the mountain. This fire god of the mountain like Prometheus or all of the other various Luciferian deities, like, like Enki as well, Anzu or now referred to as Zozo or the Divine Owl, and the theft of the Tablet of Destinies seems to also be concurrent with this archetypal force. However, Maui was another Luciferian character who brought fire to mankind, and interestingly, like the Tower of Babel, and the current quest for the Homo Deus, he was said to have, quote, his last trick which led to his death involved the goddess Hinunue Tepo, 
the spirit of the night, the angel of oblivion or the lunar gate in essence, in an attempt to make mankind immortal, I'll say that again, in an attempt to make mankind immortal, he changed into a worm and Maui, again a worm is very similar to, to a tower, right? A long slender uh, shape that seeks to like what a worm does in dirt, penetrate, right? Um, again, like the Tower of Babel, it was attempted to penetrate through the the firmament, again through the abyss into the he- into the heavens. Uh, continuing on, he changed into a worm, and Maui entered her female genitalia, intending to leave through her mouth while she slept. Again, this links to the sort of black hole that idea of, and again this this appears throughout all forms of symbolism, the toroid as well, you go through one uh, part of the toroid and you come out the other, right? It's uh, the eternal cycle if you will. It's also the reason for the apple of Eden, which is in the same shape as the toroid, uh, or it's in a similar shape at least. Intending to leave her, uh, leave through her mouth while she slept, but was crushed by the obsidian teeth in her female genitalia. Again, obsidian is created from a uh, volcanic fire, right? It's volcanic glass. So very interesting what we see there. Naturally, this story is entirely metaphorical, and is an anthropomorphizing of the elemental and archetypal forces at play within both the psyche of humanity and the wider macrocosm of the universe and the wheel of existence. The need for the created to subsume the position of the creator, for the creation to leap from the canvas and wrestle from the hands of its creator, the brush of heavenly creativity. Indeed, it always fails and, as we saw with the god Maui, he dies in his attempt at vain trickery. Man may think himself intelligent. This may even develop into the hubris that we are the only beings in existence and are the writers of fate. But eventually, we must bite the dust of humility and find ourselves embroiled in the throes of an ineluctable death, which itself begets new life. Authorities kept claiming, in light of the high number of missing people, that they did not have a list of the missing people. However, the natives of the island, however, the natives of the island have stated emphatically, and this logically makes sense, that they have provided details of their missing loved ones. Of course, the majority of the 850 missing people are children. Conveniently, the Kabbalistic governor of Hawaii, who was coincidentally not on the island at the time of the fires, had signed an executive order one month prior to the fires that ordered that the land in Maui could be expropriated from the people by the state government if they required to rezone in light of a natural disaster or or emergency. Hence, he changed the zoning laws a month prior to the fires. In January, the Department of Homeland proposed a $75 million dollar a housing project grant on 51 acres in Lahaina, which was conveniently the exact area that was destroyed by the fires. And now obviously they can build those, uh, build that housing project. Indeed, this aligns perfectly with the WF's plan for 15 minute cities, due to obviously Maui and other cities that have been affected by these anomalous wildfires being unable, being able to be rebuilt to facilitate such a radical urban redevelopment plan. In fact, the WEF also mentioned that Maui would be quite an important area to trial a 15-minute city. Of note too, Maui also held a smart city conference in July 2023 Thus, the smart city plan, or the 15-minute city plan, has perfectly preceded these conveniently selective wildfires. 
the lockup of the populace three years ago, and that which they potentially will do again, was the gradual conditioning into the 15 minute city plan. And it is like that colony within the Middle East being built on the foundation of terrorism. As seen in an article from August 20th, 2018, on the WEF website, quote, how Hawaii plans to be the first US state to run entirely on clean energy, unquote. Quote, last January of 2023, there was a smart city conference in Maui to turn Maui into an entire smart city island, pushing everything electric and making 15 minute smart cities eh, a thing. Lastly, there was a contract last year that was signed to build high rise condos and businesses in Lahaina, which was a historical town that couldn't have any new development done to it, but now it can conveniently. Unquote. On the missing children, this is the reason for that, which is contained in my Those Cries and Heard series. That's recommended viewing. Biblical evidence of Yahweh and DEWs. Exodus 9.23 Moses stretched out his staff towards the sky, and the Lord sent thunder and hail, and fire ran down on the earth, and the Lord rained hail on the land of Egypt. Numbers 11.1 1. Now the people came, uh, became like those who complain of adversity in the hearing of the Lord, and when the Lord heard it, his anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed some of the outskirts of the camp. Numbers 11.3 So the name of that place was called Tabara, because the fire of the Lord burned among them. Leviticus 9.24 Then fire came out from before the Lord and consumed the burnt offering and the portions of fat on the altar. And when all the people saw it, they shouted and fell on their faces. Judges 6.21 then the angel of the Lord, and the, again, what I'm going to read here, it makes one believe that this clique already have, or potentially had, in the distant past, this technology, right? So continuing on. Judges 6.21 Then the angel of the Lord put out the end of the staff that was in his hand, and touched the meat and the unleavened bread. And fire sprang up from the rock and consumed the meat and the unleavened bread. Then the angel of the Lord vanished from his sight. 1 Kings 18.23 Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering, and the wood, and the stones, and the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. This is what this was in Maria, a burnt offering. 1 Chronicles 21.26 Then David built an altar to the Lord there and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings and he called to the Lord and he answered him with fire from heaven on the altar of the burnt offering. 2 Kings 1.10 Elijah uh, replied to the captain of 50, quote, If I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your 50, unquote. Then fire came down from heaven and consumed him and his 50. 2 Kings 1.14 Behold, fire came down from heaven and consumed the first two captains of fifty with their fifties. But now let my life be precious in your sight. Unquote. Revelation 29 And they came up on the board, on the broad plain rather, of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints in the beloved city. And fire came down from heaven and devoured them. Luke 9.54, when his disciples James and John saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? Revelation 8.5, then the angel took the censer and filled it with the fire of the altar and threw it to the earth, and there followed peals of thunder and sounds and flashes of lightning and an earthquake. Revelation 8, 7. The first sounded, and there came hail and fire, mixed with blood, and they were thrown to the earth. And a third of the earth was burned up, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. Interestingly as well, in Ezekiel, 
um, I'm not sure if I include it here, but sitting on the throne of God, right, the throne of Yahweh, uh, the, the throne of the Demiurge really, is a humanoid form that is completely filled with fire, right? So Yah Yahweh is a fire god, right? He's a god of fire, like Vulcan or, or what have you. Ezekiel 38, 22, with pestilence and with blood. And by the way, what I'm mentioning here, that is not all the, the passages and verses that we find throughout the Bible, in the biblical record, regarding Yahweh as, you know, a god of fire. However, Ezekiel 38, 22, with pestilence and with blood, I will enter into judgment with him, and I will reign on him and on his troops, and on the many peoples who are with him, a torrential rain with hailstones, fire and brimstone. Lamentations 1.13 quote, From on high he sent fire into my bones, and it prevailed over them. He has spread a net for my feet. He has turned me back. He has made me desolate. Faint all day long, unquote. 1 Kings 18.24 Then you call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God who answers by fire, he is God. Wow. And all the people said, that is a good idea. Of course they did. Hebrews 12.29 For our God is a consuming fire. There's many more of them, by the way. Very similar to that Hebrews 12.29 uh, just slightly different in its wording. That God is a cons this Yahweh is a consuming fire. Additionally, there was no FEMA response following this disaster. No comment made by Biden or the White House uh, while it was going on. No donations or supplies. Residents were not allowed to leave the affected areas. Again, because it was most likely a burnt offering. And it was John Pelletier, the incident commander at the Mandalay shooting into now the police chief in Maui. By the way, the first non-Hawaiian to take that pivotal role. Uh, he became police chief in, fortuitously, December 2021. He was actually born in Buffalo, New York. So, very interesting. I mean, this, this guy gets about. So, he went from Buffalo, New York, down to Nevada. So, he was there for the Mandalay shooting in 2017. And then he took the pivotal role, the first non-Hawaiian in, in history to do so. He took the pivotal role as police chief in Maui, right? Very interesting. Very convenient. Suspiciously too, oh so yeah, he gave the orders to the police to lock people into the affected areas, right? Basically to let them burn to death. Uh, and obviously die from inhalation of the smoke. Suspiciously, he went from a salary of $158,000 in December 2022 to a salary of $205,000 in February 2023, a time period of less than two months. Clearly, they were rewarding him for some form of loyalty. Strangely too, the water was turned off completely on the day of the event and thus the firefighters who had the blazes under control eh, quickly lost that control once they expended their available water supply and could not refill that said supply. Moreover, like Katrina and the, the protocol of Cull implemented there, all communication lines and Wi-Fi services were shut down during the duration of the event, and thus reports of the event were entirely filtered through the media. Incidentally too, there is a military base near Maui, home to 36,000 military personnel, and yet, it did nothing on the day of the fires. In fact, there are a total of 14 military bases on Hawaii, and none of them lent any aid to the affected area, and it seems to be that stand-down orders were sent down the chain of command. Conversely, on August 18th, there was a fire in Honolulu on an adjacent island, and it was contained in only 13 hours with help from the Honolulu Fire Department, the Federal Fire Department, and the US Army, who provided two air assets 
and one a vehicular asset. Another troubling point to add is that the Air Force Maui Optical and Supercomputing, or AMAS, website has the freedom to, quote, operate and maintain satellites in space, which is a critical component of our national security, unquote. Indeed, satellites are an integral component of DEW system targeting. In addition, neither a siren or the alert system was utilised to warn people of the dangerous situation. And this is rather anomalous, because in 2018, there was a rather infamous debacle with a false ICBM alert. Therefore, they have these systems but failed to use them to warn anybody in that area. Biden also tweeted that, again cryptically, with laser precision focus, we are helping families in Maui. Very strange, unquote. $700 was sent to every family, to which seven is the number of the demiurge. Moreover, in Kabbalah, in the Zohar, we see the penultimate shin letter with the value of 300 and the final tav letter with the value of 400 combine into the letter shet with a value of 700. This is symbolic of the tikkun olam, or the world that has been rectified. In the Pritzker edition of the Zohar, in the annotations of that section, we read, quote, From the birth of Enosh's son Canaan, Genesis 5.9, through the birth of patriarch Israel's twelve sons, a perfect path of linguistic progression ensued. Cordovero writes that in the generations between Canaan and Terah, Abraham's father, one can find 32 pairings of letters representing progression and regression through the alphabet, again the sinusoidal wave. The process culminating at Mount Sinai when all letters have been represented, unquote, right? Again, this is similar to the seventh millennium, the Tikkun Olam, all of this. Indeed, like the eighth day is that of the continuance or renewing of the cycle of creation and also of the Tikkun in essence then so too does 33 represent the same notion, again after the 32 uh, pairings of letters. Of that continuance of the cycle, interestingly too, in Arabic numerals the 33 or 3 and 3 combined, with the first 3 being reversed, also creates the 8 or the analemma, a symbol of the eternality and connection between both both heaven and earth or being and existence. In Shar Hagil Gulim, Hagdama 36, Rabbi Yitzchak Luria, the Arizal, writes that Moshe was a reincarnation of Adam's third son, Shet, or Seth. A name very similar, again like the letter, a name very similar to Set, the Egyptian Satan, or another Luciferian character, where Shetan the Hebrew and Arabic shaitan may derive. Again, Set, Shet, Seth, Shet, Shetan, and he was a trickster and desert or desheret god of the Red Land, to which the Habru Amar or Hyksos, according to the record, worshipped him almost exclusively. Zion may actually be a composite word meaning holy place or pillar of the barren land or red land or desheret or desert." Unquote. And that Shet was a reincarnation of Hevel or Abel. The mem of Moshe's name stands for Mo- Moshe, of course, or Moses or Miss also. It can also be synonymous with Messiah, actually. The Shin stands for Shet and the He for Hevel. This also links somewhat to the religious term of Shem or Again, Shin and uh, Mem. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai and Rabbi Yitzchak Luria had sparks from the soul of Moshe Rabbeinu, or uh, literally the the anointed teacher, or or the saving teacher, the uh, the master savior, if you will. Right? We see video where the grass around the cars is not burnt. Interestingly, thus. 
This indicates that the fires were selective and were targeting the buildings in urban area to hence facilitate a rebuilding of these cities to conceivably be more in line with the stated goals of Agenda 2030 and Agenda 2050, the Great Reset and the 15-minute Hunger Game-like cities. Ships 150 feet out in the harbour were also mysteriously ablaze, as has been seen from the video evidence. In essence, they are thence rebuilding the prison and ensuring the inmates now have no possessions left. Just like with the California fires, mansions of the select few were left untouched and the native population was prejudicially targeted. The poor were immolated en masse and their livelihoods were destroyed.